Hello students, I hope you all are well. Uh, I am teacher Rucha and in this video lecture I will be talking about figures of speech. Now this particular lecture is uh, for 8th, 9th as well as 10th. We will be covering some common figures of speech which are there for all these three standards. Before that let us pray. We pray to God who some call mystery beyond all definition that when in the midst of uncertainty, may we know faith. When in the midst of anxiety, may we know serenity. When in the midst of stress, may we know calm. When in the midst of fear, may we know trust. When in the midst of bewilderment, may we know assurance. When in the midst of confusion, may we know confident, confidence. When in the midst of pandemic, May we know peace when in the midst of whatever may we know love. Stay at home, pray at home. Students, stay, stay safe. Coming back to our topic which is figures of speech. So in this particular lecture, we are going to learn following figures of speech and those are simile, metaphor, alliteration, repetition, tautology, inversion or anastrophe, onomatopoeia, interrogation or rhetorical question, apostrophe, personification, epigram and imagery. Now I request uh, students of standard 8 and 9 to write these uh, the definitions and the two examples uh, of these each and every figure of speech given in this slide in the following slide to, uh, to write it in the grammar notebook. So let us start with our first figure of speech that is simile. Now simile in, in simile direct comparison is made between two different objects and words such as like, as, resembles or than are used. For example, he fought like a lion. Here uh, a direct comparison is made between person and a liar using the word like. Uh, another example is the box is as light as feather. Here a direct comparison is made between a box and a feather. Yes, using the word as. Okay. So in the uh, students in the exam, you don't need to underline or uh, highlight these words. When, when you come across a, an example of simile, I have just highlighted it so that you can uh, you can pay attention. So uh, simile, what is simile? Simile is a type of figurative language that expresses a comparison between two entities using comparison words, comparative words. Okay? Two things. So simile compares two different things. Now, these comparisons may not be logical comparisons, but it only focuses on the characteristics of those two things. For example, when you say she is as busy as a bee, that means she is not humming like a bee. She is, she is busy as a bee. Her busyness, is her continuity of working is compared to a busy bee, a bee, because bee is uh, working all the time, uh, as we all know, right? They, uh, in collecting honey and storing it, right? So busyness is offered uh, often compared to B. Then uh, her shoes sparkle like diamonds. So it doesn't mean that really diamond or any other precious stone is embedded on this on the shoe, but they are so glittery, both so sparkling that they sparkle like diamonds. Hungry, uh, he is has hungry as hungry as a bear. So that doesn't mean that person is. Uh, uh, so much hungry that he's growling and all, but he could eat anything served to him like a bear. Then uh, flat is a pancake. So if you want to compare any flat surface, you can compare it to a pancake as flat as pa pancake. Hard as a rock. If you come across a wall which is very hard, you can say that or a door or something, you can say that it was hard as a rock. So fake similes are many times funny and they are funny because it catches the attention of reader, right? 
So let us study the example of simile uh, from a poetry. Uh, there's a famous poetry by T.S. Eliot, The Love Song of J. Alfred, and this is the first stanza of, the, of her poetry. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky, like a patient, it rised upon a table. Now here, the evening is, has been directly compared to a patient by using the word like. So, uh, what is etherized? Etherized means uh, given anesthesia. You all know that when the uh, doctors are performing surgery, they uh, give anesthesia to the patient so that he or she won't feel pain. So, etherized means anesthetized with ether. So, uh, you know, when the patient is anesthetized, when the patient is unconscious, he won't be aware, he or she won't be aware of how she is sleeping or in which position he or he is sleeping. He would just spread out on the table, on the operation table. Similarly, here the evening which is spread out is, has been compared directly to a patient who has been etherized. So the next example is from one of my favorite poetry, which I studied, uh, studied as a child in standard six. Uh, the, poetry's, uh, the poetry name is Daffodils. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, besides the lake beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze by William Wordsworth. From that. So, in this particular poetry, in the very, in the very two, uh, the very two line, first, sorry, in the uh, first two lines, in the very first two lines, you can see the example of simile. I wondered, I wandered lonely as a cloud. So here, poet is comparing himself, his uh, wandering and his loneliness to a cloud. Again, this is an example of simile. Now let us move to our next figure of speech, which is metaphor. Here's a fun fact about metaphor. The word metaphor comes from the ancient Greek word metaphorin, which means to carry over or to transfer. It's just a fun fact. You don't, you need not uh, write any notes for this. So metaphor is an indirect comparison which is made between two objects. Here, words such as like and as are not used. For example, he was a lion in the field. Here, the, now your indirect comparison has been made between the strength of a person to a lion. Then, uh, the camel is the ship of a desert. Again, camel has been indirectly compared to a ship. Now you have been studying simile and metaphors since standard 7, but still I know sometimes they can be confusing. So let us uh, note down the difference between two. Simile and metaphor, these two of, uh, are the famous methods, famous figures of speech that work very well. Um, and both of them are widely used by writers and the poets to create mental images of their readers and make their texts lively and interesting isn't it when a particular thing is compared to another thing we relate it to uh, we relate it very uh, very easily right um, so when you use a simile you say that something is like or as something is and when you pen, paint a picture by saying that something is something else you use metaphor in simple words, in simple words, simile and metaphor. Simile is a comparison of two different things using the words like or as. Metaphor uh, is a comparison of two different things that does not use the words like or as. Example, on her first day of school, Jane was as cool as a cucumber. Now, uh, here the word as is used to show the comparison. So here direct comparison is made um, made between the girl Jane and Cucumber. On the other side, 
uh, if you look at the example of metaphor, Noah has a heart of lion. Here, an indirect comparison has been made. No word as or like has been used. So, Noah has a heart of lion. That doesn't mean Noah literally has a heart of lion. But Noah's heart is really big. Now, when you look for uh, examples of metaphor in a poetry, there is this poetry, the night is a big black, big black cat. The night is a big black cat. The moon is her topaz eye. The stars are my sheep and at night in the field of sultry sky by G. or Clark. Now, in this poem, the poet has compared night to a big black, black cat. And this word, comparison is indirect comparison. The word like, as, resembles, such as is not used. Again, uh, her eyes are also compared to uh, the moon and uh, and even topaz. Topaz is a pre precious stone. Stars here are compared to mines. So night hunts of the stars like the cat chases mice. So there are a lot of uh, examples of metaphor in this particular poem. So I came across this funny poetry on internet which is on homework and if you do not like homework you can easily relate to this poetry. Homework, no one likes it. Homework is a bee sting on your cup. It's the worst. Homework is dropping your ice cream cone on the sidewalk. How awful. Homework is a deflated balloon. So depressing. Let's do away with it. So homework here, uh, poet mentions that nobody likes homework and we come across many children who do not like homework and many of you might not enjoy doing homework at home, right? So homework is has been here indirectly compared to a bee sting. Now you can imagine when a bee stings somebody's tongue, it is uh, it can be very painful and it would be very impossible for that person to talk. Right? So it's worst. Homework is dropping your ice cream cone on the sidewalk. Now the action of dropping an ice cream cone on the sidewalk also has been compared to homework. All of a sudden, you, you are eating ice cream on the streets and all of a sudden, you drop your ice cream on a sidewalk. It can be very sad, very awful. Homework is a deflated balloon. Now you can see children how happy they are with balloons. They are playing it and once the balloon deflates, they get sad. So they, uh, it depresses them. So homework is similarly depressing. When you don't expect any homework and at that time teacher is giving you the assignment, homework can be de uh, depressing. So let's do away with it. So better you just finish it off so that there is no tension over. So what do we know about metaphor? Metaphor is poetically calling things something else. Now let us look at the other two figures of speech. Next two figures of speech. Alliteration and repetition. Now in alliteration, the sound of letter is repeated for better poetic effect. Example, Bob brought a box of bricks to the basement. Now, uh, here the sound of letter B is repeated for the better poetic effect. We are not talking about letter, but we are focusing on the sound. Then, four fools fell into a fountain. Again, here the sound of the letter F is repeated to give a better poetic effect. Uh, now, look at repeti repetition. Now, here words, phrases and even sentences are uh, repeated. Again, for the better poetic effect, uh, the example of which is Bob brought boxes and boxes of bricks. Okay, this is the same example as we discussed in alliteration. But the difference over here is that the words boxes are repeated to give a better poetic effect. Then the, another example is no stir in the air, no stir in the sea. Again, the words no stir are repeated for a poetic effect. Now let us look uh, look into these figures of speech in detail. First, we will discuss about alliteration. Now look at this example. Uh, I have heard how hedgehogs hop the hedge. Now what is done over here? 
here the, uh, the sound uh, the repeating sound is often a starting word okay have heard how hedgehogs hog hedge okay and also that the uh, this thing also the syllables the syllables which are stressed so for example hedgehog hedgehog is one word but again the hog in hedgehog is stressed so over here we can, uh, we can say this is an exam example of alliteration because sound h is repeated quite often there's a story regarding this uh, this uh, alliteration you can find the story on the net it is story for small kids but you can go through for it uh, for fun so what do we un understand by alliteration alliteration is repetition of same letter or sound within nearby words and most often uh, repeated the initial are consonants <laughs> sorry for example why not waste a wild weekend at westmore water park again here sound w is repeated quite often see the same letter or sound actually more specifically we will stress on sound only and these sounds are not like far away from each other why not waste a wild weekend at west moor water park right so these sounds are nearby and most often repeated uh, there are repeated initial consonants initial consonants what do you mean by initial consonants see the starting letters why waste wild weekend west moor these all are initial consonants right then we saw a snake slithering by our own uh, way home so we saw a snake here three times it is repeated but still we can say it is an ex example of alliteration so uh, saw a snake slithering here are some funny examples of alliterations lazy lipping lizards like licking lucius lollipops cockatoo scuttle cockroaches crazy cockatoo scuttle cockroaches then uh, killer kangaroos kick koalas so rudimental kind keen koalas kick kites poppy platypuses pink prickly pineapples naked numbas nimble nuts wonderful wombats wind up wind windmills purple possums pick purple plums cool cobras kiss koalas okay uh, here now uh, the poet or the person who has made this uh, alliteration may constructed the sentence has purposely um changed the spelling of cool right to uh, from c o w l uh, sorry c o w o l cool to k o w o l cool why just to uh, add the sound effect so that it can be a perfect example of alliteration so he has taken a creative liberty over here these are some poetic uh, examples of alliteration the first one being rain rain races rippling like wind its restless rage rattles like rocks ripping through the air now here sound r is repeated often right the second one is a uh, wind whistles the wind whistles through the air while talking turtles shiver like sea horses when everyone is asleep here not only sound w that is wind uh, is repeated but also talking turtles sound t is also repeated then sea horses while everyone is asleep sound s is also repeated but uh, stress is not laid that much on sound s so you can say that sound w and t is repeated then laughing lions laughing lions laugh like jumping jaguars on top of talking trees when the talking trees start talking the joking jaguars fall off again here laughing lions uh, sound l is repeated jumping jaguar sound j is repeated talking trees on the top of talking trees sound t is repeated so there are multiple uh, sounds which have been re repeated in this particular poetry the last is uh, carrying cats 
carrying cat's casket off, La laughing llamas lounging, underneath yelling yaks, yelling at roaming rats. So, carrying cat's uh, casket, sound K is actually repeated. Uh, letter C is repeated. Then laughing llamas, uh, sound L, L is repeated. Underneath yelling yaks, yelling sound Y is repeated. So letter Y is repeated. Again, we have to uh, put, uh, we have to see the sound while uh, figuring out figuring out the alliterations. Keep that in mind. So sometimes uh, letter with K and C may be in the same line or same poetic uh, expression, but since uh, they might be pronounced as k, then too you can say that sound k is repeated. Now we move to our next figure of speech and one of the most easiest one that is repetition, 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 repetition. Why, I did, why did I say this multiple times? Because as you know, repetition is repeating the same words or phrases multiple times in the poetry. Here's one small poetry on repetition. To grandma's house we go. To grandma's we go. Sitting, yawning, snoring. To grandma's we go. To grandma's we go. Waiting, squabbling, maddening. To grandma's we go. So uh, several times this phrase to grandma's we go has been repeated in this poetry. So whenever words or phrases are repeated several times in the uh, in the poem at that time with the figure of speech is repetition so repetition is nothing but it is a literal device that repeats the same words or phrases a few times why to make idea clearer now let's just point out a uh, difference between alliteration and repetition alliteration is a noun a part of speech and a figure of speech as well Repetition is a noun, a part of speech and a way of using words to express mood and important ideas. Uh, in alliteration, there is a repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of the words, also known as consonants. In repetition, uh, repetition of words within a sentence or piece of writing. There is a repetition of words within a sentence or piece of writing. And they may not be necessarily linked to the sounds. In alliteration, repetition of uh, there's repetition of vowel sounds known as assonance. The vowel can be made of different letters, but the sound must be same. And in repetition, uh, repetition has nothing to do with sounds, but it uh, is all to do with words. So in simple uh, in simple terms, you can remember that alliteration is about repeating sounds. It's sounds, not letters. Remember that. And repetition is about repeating words or phrases. Next figure of speech is personification. So when an inanimate object or a non-living object is given a human attribute or a human quality, at that time, the figure of speech is personification. For example, the leaves were restless when the wind blew. Now, can leaves be restless like us human beings? No. But still, this human quality has been given to the leaves. The leaves are given the human quality of restlessness. And the stars began to peep. Now, even stars cannot peep, right? We human beings can peep. Stars are just blinking, but this blinking is compared to peeping. Stars are given the human quality of peeping. So, what is personification? Personification is when you give human qualities and human characteristics to an object, animal or an idea. So, it is a kind of metaphor in which non-human thing or quality is talked about as if it were human. For example, the angry brooding storm, uh, clouds pelted me with uh, their disapproval. Let us look at some more examples. 
here yeah the, this picture of the car this car looks tired right the car was suffering and was in need of some tlc tlc means what tender loving care so now the car here is shown as if it is suffering and it's very tired probably it's uh, this is this is referred to the human beings those who do not take proper care of their car those who those who do not maintain them time to time and uh, you know those who don't clean them from inside out time to time uh, and all the paperwork and all is not done properly or the car is not used that often or overused sometimes at that time you know there might be some uh, problem in the functioning of the car so that's why here the uh, person who has written this line might have said the car was suffering and was in needs need of some tlc so the car also needs cleaning oiling greasing taking care time to time now this is one poetry the furniture uh, furniture batch the hand of the clock pinched the foot of the bed so the foot of the bed kicked the seat of the chair so the seat of the chair sat on the head of the table so the head of the table uh, bit the leg of the desk so the leg of the desk bumped the arm of the couch so the arm of the couch slapped the face of the clock and they pinched and they punched and they banged and they knocked and they ripped and they flipped and they rolled and they rocked and the poor dresser drawer got a couple of socks there are there was saw distant springs when i turned on the light after the horrible furniture fight and that's the truth no lie no joke and that's how your furniture all got broke so Uh, in this poetry, this poetry is entire personification: the clock, the table, the chair, the uh, the drawer. Everything, everything has been compared to human beings. It's a fun poem. Next figure of speech is apostrophe. Uh, here a direct address is made to an abstract idea or dead or absent uh, for example oh god please help me so why this is apostrophe because god has been addressed over here now god is absent physically right that is why this figure of speech is apostrophe shakespeare thy mantle has fallen on no ha no man now shakespeare again is uh, no more with us so uh, this figure of speech is definitely apostrophe because here a dead person is being addressed addressed as if he were living so apostrophe means uh, addressing someone who is absent dead or non human as if that is a person real person existing in front of you or the thing or, or a person uh, present before you so uh, like examples for example you can take oh nature thou art my goddess here nature is not a person right it's, a, it's an abstract uh, it's an abstract thing so yet a uh, poet is talking to nature so this particular figure of speech is apostrophe little lamb who made thee now again little lamb uh, yeah little lamb exist but then uh, cannot talk to us like the way we can so still uh, the poet is talking to the little lamb blow winds blow now blow winds also cannot communicate they can just blow that still the poet is communicating uh, talking to the winds so these three uh, are the examples of apostrophe this is a poem by john joy death be not proud death be not proud though some have called thee mighty and dreadful for thou art not so for those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow die not poor death nor yet canst thou kill me from rest and sleep which but thy pictures be 
much pleasure then from thee much more much must flow and soonest a best men with thee do go rest of their bones and souls delivery thou art slave to fate chance kings and desperate men and dust with poison war and sickness dwell and poppy of charms can make us sleep as well and better than thy stroke why swells thou then one shot spa- sleep past we wake eternally and death shall be no more death thou shall die so this particular poem is addressed to death by the poet poet john do uh, now death is an abstract idea we can't really see it but but still the poet is addressing why so that uh, people should not uh, people should not think that once we die uh, it's all over once we die our soul still leaves right uh, continue to exist so that's the idea behind the poem we can state that this po- whole poem is yeah it is having a lot of archaic words and that is the words in old english but the whole poem is basically in apostrophe the next figure of speech is epigram uh epigram it is a brief and witty statement often in verse how brief and witty how witty uh let's see through the examples the first is the child is the father of man now here uh, this epigram demonstrate a uh, human coupled with wisdom means child is not literally the father of man but he is wiser than his father that's why the poet has said the child is the father of man the second one fools rush in where angels fear to tread that means a uh, fool foolish people usually takes such decision which won't be taken by the wise people so fools rush in where angels fear to tread so it is a critical and mocking statement sarcastic statement okay? stating the facts now these two are some uh, two famous quotes by the uh, famous writers the first one is it is better to light a candle than curse the darkness uh, it's written by elena rose willett which means uh, if you are cursing cursing the bad situation or blaming yourself for someone else in a given situation then that's not a solution instead what is the thing what's the uh, what's the point or uh, what's the thing you are supposed to do you are supposed to find a solution to your problems okay or to uh, simplify the situation try to simplify the situation so it is better to light a candle than curse the darkness another one is for most of history anonymous was a woman now if you read your history lessons uh, you might find that uh, many people uh, talk about men basically there are most of the uh, men who are writers male writers and uh, they are more famous than the women writers why because uh, women did not have had voice in the uh, in the uh, historical time in the previous uh, periods and that is why very few writers women writer very few poets are there and very few women are mentioned in uh, history textbooks and history books and uh, even they have been praised also very less so this uh, virginia wolf she is a feminist writer uh, so she says for most of history anonymous was a woman anonymous means what unknown so there's one poem epigram for wall street okay. uh i'll sell you a plan for gaining wealth better than banking trade or leases leases means what uh, a contract signed between the two people for uh, money or loan or uh, property okay? then take a bank note and fold it up and then you will find your money increases this wonderful plan without danger or loss keeps your cash in your hands where nothing can trouble it and every time that you fold it across this is a plan as the light of the day that you double it so this is actually a funny poetry where by the poet edgar allan poe he is saying that the best way to save your money is just hold it and keep it in your pocket okay 
when you feel that banks are not trustworthy or uh, investing somewhere in uh, in any scheme in any trade in any company is not safe it's better you save your money okay it's better you clear just hold it and keep it in your pocket so again it has a message a witty uh, state there are a lot of witty statements in the poetry so this is an example of epigram so whenever you find an advice or a wise statement in a particular uh, line then it becomes an epigram interrogation or rhetorical question uh, what's the difference between a rhetorical question and a normal question yeah uh, question posed to provoke thought rather than generate an answer is a rhetorical question so here the uh, main aim of the question asked is not to uh, expect an answer it's not to get an answer but to uh, infuse the thought raised by that question for example does money grow on tree it's a rhetorical question okay sometimes uh, you might ask possibly things from your parents okay, and they might have replied does money grow on tree so it's a rhetorical question of course money don't grow on tree right thus a rhetorical question is self evident it is used for style okay and here answer is not expected because it is used to emphasize a point or draw the audience attention that is the main uh, aim of the rhetorical question for example who is in charge here anyway so this again this again is a uh, rhetorical question because since there is no in charge uh, therefore i will do as you say so that uh, another way to say that uh, i'll i'll do as you say that is who is in charge here anyway these are some rhetorical questions which you might have uh, heard or used quite often like how could you is this a joke are you crazy why is this happening to me who cares does money grow on tree again the same question so these are the rhetorical questions which we uh, hear uh, quite often here not a, a precise answer or answer even answer in yes or no or not is not expected but the main thing is uh, the idea should be uh, idea should be uh, implied properly this is rhetorical question poem raindrops feelings i wonder if they like being raindrop raindrops i suppose they do they always have friends around them they never travel alone some people save them to wash their hair they make trees grow so this is a poem by tiara jones it's on uh, it's on raindrops <sighs> forget the rest of the poem look at the uh, first line of the poetry i wonder if they like being raindrops the question the question that the, the poetry itself has been started with a question and this question is a rhetorical question because the poet again wants to provoke a thought okay not uh, not she doesn't want any answer from you then this is another poem what does he plant who plants a tree he plants a friend of sun and sky he plants the flag of breezes free the shaft of beauty towering high he plants a home to heaven and i for song and moon croon of bird in hushed and happy twilight heard the treble of heaven's harmony these things he plants who plants a tree so here also if you look at the first line of the poetry it's a rhetorical question the main uh, aim of the poetry is to provoke the thought and uh, but not to uh, or ask question or get an answer onomatopoeia so here a sound is expressed through words how can a sound be expressed through words so i could hear buzzing here buzzing is not uh, has no specific meaning buzzing is a word that suggests a sense of sound like buzzing of the you know then uh, the guns thundered all day long again 
the word thunder such as the sound sense of sound when you say the guns thunder you can actually imagine the sounds made by the shot of gun right these are the uh, onomatopoeia words they are not a meaningful words but they are sounds like bang bang beep boing blast clink clang honk then girl omg yeah all these are sound vroom vroom thud these are sounds uh, these are not exact meaningful words there are some more examples with sentences uh, i'll read a few the flood water gushed through the town through the town so here gushed is again an onomatopoeia word then the owl hooted in the tree at night the wind was howling in the darkness hooted howling these are words which express sounds right my teeth chattered as i stood in the snow chattered again is a is an example of onomatopoeia word the corn went pop in the microwave so pop again is a sound the leaves crunched under my feet as i walked through the woods crunch is a sound the horn beep loudly beep again is a sound you can read uh, you can pause and read rest of the examples also so that you will get idea uh, about onomatopoeia onomatopoeia words this is again one example of onomatopoeia you might have heard about the story of pied piper right so uh, this it is in the poetic form over here and air three shrill notes the pipe uttered shrill again is the sound you heard as if any arm, army muttered muttered is what sound and the muttering grew grew to grumbling grumbling again is sound and the grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling rumbling again a sound and out of out of the houses the rats came uh, tumbling so all uh, this entire poetry you can say is the is the example of onomatopoeia so what is onomatopoeia onomatopoeia is a literary device in which a word is used to demonstrate a sound words like buzz scrape plop crunch crash bang and boom are the examples of this and it is just uh, often just a written replication of the way we perceive the sound the way we understand the sound so if you have seen this series uh, sara bai versus sara bai you might have uh, seen this character rosy sara bai he used to write very funny poetry which would which would make you laugh out loud one of which is this one aasman mein ud raha hai kabutar aasman mein ud raha hai kabutar flutter 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 so flutter 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 again here is example of onomatopoeia then uh, poetry is are in hindi but we can just look at look at the examples only for uh, to understand it better then khatar khun khatar khun khatar khun sun mere dil ki dhun tere pyar ki oiling mil gayi ise tere to khatar khun khatar khun khatar khun ho jayega gun 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 so khatar khun khatar khun khatar khun gun 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 these are examples again of what onomatopoeia right then I also came across came across this poetry, lagul 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 lal lagul 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 jelly jelly or whatever it is you read the poem later. But uh, this ex poetry is not example of onomatopoeia, but it is an example of imagery about which I will be talking shortly. But I may forget it. That's why I have just added the picture right now. Again, I found one more picture. This hawa me. है खुशी की अरोमा जीत गई मोमा जीत गई मोमा से हाई टू हैपीनेस एंड टाटा टू ड्रामा जीत गई मोमा जीत गई मोमा सो दिस इज आल्सो नॉट एन एग्जांपल ऑफ ओनोमैटोबोया बट इट्स एन एग्जांपल ऑफ रेपिटेशन यस वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड रेपिटेशन इन दिस वे इफ यू आर वाचिंग एनी टीवी सीरीज और इवन वेब सीरीज यू कैन रिलेट द थिंग्स व्हिच यू हैव स्टडीड इन योर लेसंस राइट uh and just to add this slide is just for fun so that you can light up your mood for some time this lecture might have been uh, really long i haven't seen the time yet okay so let's proceed now inversion inversion or can also be called anastrophe 
What is inversion? It is the normal order of the words, uh, which is suitably rearranged for the sake of uh, uh, for the sake of emphasis. Like, uh, for example, ten thousand saw I at a glance. Now, ten thousand saw I at a glance means uh, this sentence may not make sense, but still you can understand. And for a better poetic effect. Okay. the words are not arranged in a prose a correct prose order okay the uh, such sentences are inverted sentences or you can call them inversions then under this stone was he buried again this is an example of inversion why because the sentence is not in the correct prose order the correct prose order is he was buried under this stone See, to define uh, inversion more precisely, we can say that it is an auxiliary verb uh, which comes before the subject in several different stru structures. This is usually referred as inversion. Inversion is a literary technique in which the normal order of the words is reversed, generally for the emphasis or special effect. It makes a sentence sound striking. Or uh, unusual. Whenever you observe anything unusual, it catches your attention, right? So that what uh, that's what inversions do. It also so, uh, sounds quite formal sometimes. Uh, when do we use inversion? Uh, sometimes we use inversion in question forms. Is uh, Sacramento the capital of uh, California? While making a say, statement, we will say that yes, the Sacramento is the capital of California. But if we are making it, uh, converting it into an interrogative sentence, then is is will come before sac Sacramento. Then uh, when we use a negative adverb or uh, adverb phrase at the beginning of the sentence hardly had i closed my door when i realized i had lost the keys rarely has he got marked and in math so here hardly had rarely has been at these adverbs have been used before the rest of the sentence then in these expressions the inversions come in the second part of the sentence not until not since only after only only after, only when, only by. For example, not until I asked a passerby, did I know where I was. So again, the sentence begins with not until, with, the, with this expression. Then not since I was a kid have I eaten a bowl of cereal. Then we can use inversion instead of if in conditionals with had were or should had he trained hard he would have won the match then we can use inversion after so or such that so loud was the noise that i couldn't work then such was the day was a day that we will all remember forever we can use inversion with so neither nor to uh, express agreement i love reading so do i so again, so do I is an inverted sentence over here. Uh, this is a famous character from Star Wars Yoda and he always uh, makes his statements in inversion. If you have seen Star Wars series of, or if you are going to watch, observe him, observe his sentences. If no mistake you have made, losing you are a different game you should play. Now this again is not a correct order. But uh, the correct order of the sentence might be, if uh, if you have not made any mistake, you are, you are losing. Then uh, a different game. Then game uh, you play a different game. So these are the correct prose order, but it doesn't catch our attention, right? So Yoda catches uh, audience attention by his inverted sentences and also the witty statements that he makes. This is a poetry. Uh, Sometime to what the eye, eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair, uh, fair form from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing course and brimmed. Again, this uh, poetry is an inversion, so it can be an example of inversion or anastrophe.
Next figure of speech is tautology. Here the words or expressions of similar meaning are used mainly for emphasis, sometimes for eloquence. Eloquence means fluent or persuasive uh, speaking or writing. What is persuasive? Persuasive, persuasive is uh, convincing. For example, uh, pure unadulterated butter is available here. Why this is tautology? Because the words pure and unadulterated have the same meaning. Then it brought joy and uh, cheer. Again, this is, a, this is an example of tautology because joy and cheer both have same meaning. Then, so what do we understand by tautology? Tautology is a repetition of an idea in a different word or phrase or sentence example with malice toward none with charity for all here we can see that there are no words with similar meaning but there are phrases with more or less similar meaning with malice toward none okay with charity for all malice means an intention to harm someone so malice towards none with charity for all have more or less uh, same meaning these phrases right uh, this is a, a quote made by abraham lincoln on his second inaugural address so here's a poem with uh logic. the sun has set the light of eyes is darkened the sun has set the light light of eyes is darkened again these two phrases have same meaning a cloak of darkness clothes the moon. A cloak of darkness clothes the moon. Again, the sun has said all these have same meaning. The stars have withdrawn their brightness from shining. And every heart is sick and every eye has water. Same meanings, right? Low of his beams, the day star shone. Star gleams the moon, oh, cloudy wave. The stars are dim, our nobles mourn. The matrons weep, their children wail, weep and nail, both is a form of crying. So, same words are also repeated uh, in different forms over here. As I told you, we will be talking about imagery. Okay, so here we come to our last figure of speech, imagery. Imagery is using words to create mental picture for the reader. Uh, authors use it to appeal their readers' five senses and help them understand their writing. For example, the full moon was bright yellow disk shining in the dark night. This is imagery because it is a descriptive statement that brings an image to our mind. We actually imagine the bright yellow disk, moon as a bright yellow disk and uh, shining in the dark, right? Then uh, the second is the soft white uh, sand warmed my feet as I, as I strolled home after a day at beach. So again, uh, this is an example of imagery because we actually imagine uh, as per the description of the poem that the soft white sand is warming the poets or the author's feet as he or she strolled home after a day at beach. So these are the types of imagery, auditory, that describes what we hear, music, noise, or even silence. Tactile describes what we touch or feel. It can be a texture, movement, or temperature. Gustatory describes what we taste. It can be sour, or bitter, sweet, salty, or acidic. Visual describes what we see, colors, patterns, shapes, size. Olfactory describes what we smell, like nice fragrances or bad odors. So when we come across the words, descriptive words, it focuses on either of the things mentioned in the types of imagery. Here's a poem, Water. We are fishermen in the flat sea. All day long we are in love with water. The fish are naked, the fish are always awake. They are the color of old spoons and caribals. The sun reaches down, but the floor is not inside. Only the rocks are white and green. Who knows what goes on in the halls, halls below? Now, while reading this poet, poem, you might have imagined these things in your mind, like 
fish, uh, fishermen on the water and uh, the fish, the colors of the fish, uh, a lot of gold spoons and caramels. Then the sun reaches down, the sun setting and the rocks which are white and green near the, uh, near the water. All these things you might have imagined, imagined. So this is an example of imagery. Then there's a poem on trees by Joyce Kilmer. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks, uh, looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. Upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only gods can make a tree. So here a uh, tree, uh, when you read this poem, you can imagine, literally imagine the tree uh, uh, spreading its arms and uh, praying to the god. Then, yes, this is a personification, but you can also call it imagery, the entire poem. Uh, you can, it can be an example of imagery. You can imagine the robins, uh, uh, robin birds building their nests on the trees and uh, staying there. Then the snow falling on the tree. Then who intimately lives with the rain, the, all the raindrops on the tree leaves. All these things you can imagine when you read this poem, right? That is why this poem is an example of imagery. Now, from the next slide onwards, uh, uh, you you will have your assignment. You have to write all the examples given in the all the questions given in your notebook, grammar notebook, and find out the answers. There can be uh, it's identify figures of speech and explain. So there can be one or two figures of speech for uh, some of the questions. You can write both.